What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna learn how we can work with data in Databricks. There are a lot of ways to work with data in Databricks, and we're gonna cover a lot of them in this lesson. We're gonna upload data like a CSV and a JSON file. Then we're gonna to connect to an external data source, and we're gonna bring that data in. Then we're gonna see how we can actually use our data working in the SQL editor, as well as using a notebook. The best way to follow along is to create a Databricks account. I will leave a link in the description. It's Databricks free edition, so it is completely free. All you have to do is create an account and sign in, and you'll have access to everything. You don't have to put in a credit card at all. It is completely free, which is amazing. With all all that being said, let's jump on my screen and get started. We are starting out fresh. We haven't uploaded any data or ingested any data into Databricks yet. So you are right where you need to be. Now there's actually a lot of different ways you can bring data into Databricks. Right now we're in our workspace, but let's go over to our catalog and let's go into our workspace. Let's go into default. Right now we have no data in our default workspace. Now what we're gonna do is let's click into this default and we're gonna come right over here and we can go to create. Now we have a few different options. These two are the only ones that are really relevant to what we're doing right now. So let's create a new volume here. I'm just gonna call this a uh, YouTube series. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create this. Now you'll see right over here under default, we now have this folder called YouTube series. If I click in this YouTube series, we can upload to this volume. So we can do that right here. We don't have to actually go outside of it or go to any of these other options. We just click on upload to this volume. So let's go ahead and click browse. And I have all these different files. Now I created these, they're very simple files. We're not getting crazy in this lesson, but I have a customer's CSV and a customer's JSON. So one's a CSV file, one's a JSON file. I also have orders CSV, orders JSON, product CSV, and products JSON. We're not gonna use all these, although I will have all these files in a GitHub. You can just find them in a link below, so you can download these exact files if you wanna work alongside me. But let's bring in the customer's CSV. So I'm gonna click on this customer's CSV, and you can see this is the destination path that we are using. Let's go ahead and upload this file. And very quickly, like in one second it took, we now have our customers CSV dot CSV. Now I just named it that. So, you know, if the dot CSV wasn't there, we'll still be able to see it. Let's click into the CSV really quickly. We have our customer ID, first name, last name, country, and sign up date. And then you can see our data is all separated by a comma. Now this data is just being stored as a file. This isn't actually being stored as a table. So you can see it just sits in here as a .csv. So if we go over to our files, it's gonna sit there as an actual CSV file. Now we can still query off of this data just as it is as a file. We don't actually have to have this in a table format. Let's come right over here and let's copy this path. And then we're gonna go down to our SQL editor and let's come over here to a SQL query. Now, if we want to access this data, we can say select everything and then we'll say from, and I'm gonna put this path in here. I should be able to use backticks just like this and let's try running this. And actually I need to put CSV dot right here. Now let's try running this. And as you can see, we were able to read in our data without it actually being in a table. A CSV file is one of the easiest files to work with. It's just values that are separated by commas. And so when we do this, when we say CSV dot, and then we provide the path, we are reading in this data as if it is in a table. Now, if you come from just a SQL background, this may seem very unintuitive to you and that's okay. Let's go back to our catalog and we're gonna come over here to workspace. We're gonna go to default. And instead of going into our volume right here, we're gonna come back to our default. And so now we're gonna create a table. When we go to create a table, we're still using our serverless starter warehouse here, but now we have the ability to connect to a data source or to upload a specific file format. Let's go ahead and click browse. We just uploaded the customer's CSV, but let's go down to the orders JSON because JSON is a totally different format. Let's go ahead and open this up. It's going to read in that JSON and make it tabular, which is fantastic because JSON by definition is not a structured format. And so being able to read in that data really easily and then put it into columns and rows 
is very helpful. So now we're gonna do a create a new table. We can name this table anything we want. I'm just gonna get rid of this JSON because once it reads it in, it's like a table anyways. So we're gonna keep it as orders here. Then we're gonna create this table. Now you'll notice over here, under our default, we have tables and we have volumes. So they are separated out because they're two totally different things. One is gonna be storing different files in kind of a folder format. And then one is the tables underneath our default workspace. So let's come down here to orders. And that's actually right over here. So now under our orders, we can see customer ID, order date, order ID, product ID, quantity, and total amount. We can get a little bit of metadata on this file. And if we come up here, we can come here and just create a query. So let's click on create query. It's gonna open up a new query in here. And now we are just selecting everything from our orders table. It's already hitting off of our default schema in our workspace. So we don't have to start doing, you know, workspace, dot uh, default dot orders. We don't have to have all that, you can, uh, but I'm just gonna hit uh, control Z here. Let's go ahead and run this. And now we can see all of our data in this really pretty view. So, so far we've ingested a CSV file and we just did that as a CSV file. We were still able to read that data in, which is really fantastic, but we're also able to just create tables and then read that data in like any other SQL database. But now let's come over here to data ingestion. There's a lot of different ways you can access data that is not just sitting in a file. Right off the bat, we have our Databricks connectors, things like Salesforce, Workday, ServiceNow, Google Analytics, Azure SQL Server. These are a lot of the things that I've used in my actual work. Almost all companies are gonna have at least one of these. And so connecting to that data source, bringing it in is really common. We can also bring in data from a file like we did before or create a table from Amazon S3. And then we have our five tran connectors right down at the bottom. I know personally, I've worked at different companies. I've consulted with companies, they use Google Drive as like their store of information. That's where they keep everything. So let's go over here to Google Drive and I'm gonna actually connect this. So I'm gonna say, I wanna put it in my workspace. Let's go ahead and click next. Really quickly, I have a file over here, orders csv.csv. It's sitting in a Google Drive. So that's what we're gonna go and try to connect to. Let's go ahead and click next. This is my email that I'm using for this Google Drive. We're gonna connect this to Fivetran. Since this is a new account for Fivetran, I need to create a password, so I'm gonna do that really quick. We're gonna come right down here, and we're gonna to go to Share. And all we have to do is make sure that this is not restricted. So we're gonna say anyone with this link, which means Fivetran as well. And then we're going to copy this link and put it in our folder URL. Let's go ahead and save and test this. And it looks like our connection test passed. Let's go ahead and click Continue. And now all we're gonna do is sync our data. We'll start the initial sync. And it should be very quick because I do not have much data in this folder. So it looks like our connection was successful. Let's come over here to our schema. Our one file that we have in our Google folder is synced up, so we should be good to go. Now let's come back to our Databricks. Let's come right over here and we're gonna go into our catalog. We're gonna go into our workspace. And now we have default and we also have Google Drive. Let's click on our Google Drive and we have this orders CSV. And you'll notice that we now have it in here as a table. Let's go ahead and create a query for this so we can look at our data. So now we have workspace.google drive. It's connecting to a different schema. So we have select everything from orders CSV. Let's run this. And now we have our data. It also adds this in, which is five transynced, which is a really, really useful column because if you're syncing this data consistently, you really wanna know when that data gets put into this table. I promise you, that's really helpful that they put that in there. And then we have all of our data that we had. And so that's how we can connect to outside data. In this case, we use five tran, but sometimes you'll just do a direct connection depending on your data source. Now this SQL editor works like any other SQL editor. You're gonna be able to make joins and aggregations and all sorts of different things, but there is a different way to interact with your data. Let's come right over here. Let's go to new. We can also go and use a notebook. We can add code. We can add text. You can also use an AI assistant to help you with these things. And so we have markdown file right here. And I can say, uh, this is my first text right here. And then I have my code down here so I can start writing and typing my code. 
Now I can specify right here whether I want it to be SQL, Scala, R, or Python. So for this notebook, you can use any of these. In this cell right here, I have Python, but let's add another one and I can use SQL in the next one. And then in the next one, I could use R. And so you don't have to just use one, you can use multiple. Now, it depends on what you're doing, whether you wanna use a SQL editor or you want to come in here and use a notebook. When I'm just kind of querying data, I'm just looking at it, I'm not doing a lot of transformations. I don't need a big programming language, I'm just querying the data. I'm gonna be using a SQL you know, editor right here most of the time. And I can always save these queries and I can pass them along. But if I'm really digging in and I need to be able to break things out and leave notes and I'm gonna share this with my team, a notebook is kind of the way to go. So let's look at SQL really quick. We already have a query for this, albeit a very simple query, but let's come over here and let's run this SQL query right here. So let's go ahead and run this. And so now if we scroll down, we're gonna be able to see our data just like we did in the SQL editor. But now let's go write the same thing, but in Python. In order to do that, let's come up here and this is already in Python. So we'll just say spark.table and we need to read in uh, the appropriate table and all that is, is orders. And let's go ahead and run this. And it is reading it in as a data frame. Let's call this uh, data frame. And let's come right down here and we'll say display data frame. And let's run this. And now we're gonna get our data in a table just like before. Of course, with this, it's gonna save this data, but you can always come in here and you can rename and export it and you can put it into Git. You can share this with your friends because all your friends really care about your notebooks that you are writing. Or you can create a new notebook and start from scratch. But this is a totally different way to interact with your data in Databricks. This is where most of your work is gonna be done. It's right here querying data, whether it's a SQL query, or over here in a notebook writing a bunch of code, whether it's in Scala or Python or R or SQL itself. Now, I hope that was really helpful because in the next lesson, we're gonna be analyzing data with SQL and then also building out visualizations in Databricks. I wanna give a huge shout out to the Databricks team for sponsoring this series. They have been amazing to work with. They have one of the best platforms in the world for working with data. I've been using it for many, many years. And so I'm so excited that I get to work on this series and work on Databricks Free Edition to bring this to you so you guys can learn and use Databricks for free. I also wanna mention that Databricks has a hackathon running right now, November 5th through the 14th. It's on their Databricks free edition. If you can write down here, you can see all the requirements, but you are basically going to take your own data set and you're gonna create a demo on how you use the tool and you can win all sorts of cool prizes. I will leave a link in the description so you go ahead and check that out, but it is an awesome initiative. I love hackathons. I've been a part of many of them. And as you can see, there are prizes right down here. So go and check it out. See if this is something you wanna be part of because hackathons are a great way to learn. With that being said, I hope you liked this video. If you learned anything, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.